Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of From No Crypto to No Crypto. I'm your host, the Crypto Coach, Blockchain Wayne, and today we're joined by Aaron. Aaron is the head of product at IOTEX, and there's man, there's so much we can get into with IOTEX. Uh, they partnered with us in the past for uh, being integrated into their IOPay product. But first and foremost, Aaron, thanks for joining us today. Yes, likewise, Wayne. Uh, we've met a couple times now in person, quite a few times online, and uh, the integration's been great with you guys, and excited to continue to expand that. Absolutely, man. You know, it's, it's rare. Most of the partners that I bring on the podcast here, uh, I haven't met in person yet. So, but yeah, we've connected a couple of events, so it's cool to see. Uh, but tell us a little bit, Aaron, about your background, man. How did you get into this crazy space? 100%. Yeah. So uh, back in university, like 2017, 2018, I was playing around in the space. Um, I was excited about the use of blockchain for enterprise. And I was teaching lectures on blockchain business. Uh, and I was like the head of the blockchain club back at my school, SFU in Vancouver, Canada. And, and after graduating university, I had got a job as a product analyst at a company called SafeFleet, which focuses on uh, building hardware and software for transit, school bus, and law enforcement. So you can think about the video cameras that go in these like school buses and transit vehicles, okay. as well as like um, body worn cameras that the police wear. So building the actual camera and then all the software behind that uh, and like having like a visualization tool where you can see this, this video streaming in. Um, so that was kind of my first exposure to not crypto, but to hardware um, and software. So uh, that, uh, that was a really, really big learning experience there. So I spent, uh, a few years there and and that's that's kind of where the iot thing comes in for me uh and i i knew i had that that blockchain and crypto kind of thing i was excited about but that i really put that to the side for a few years and just focused on on advancing my career as a product manager um i got recruited to another company uh like a few years into working at SafeFleet, um and that company was a company called absolute results where absolute results i uh, built a really cool uh, AI engine that's used in the car dealership industry. So uh, that product essentially is like a recommendation engine. So depending on what vehicle you currently drive, we're able to use AI to, de to determine what vehicle you're most likely to drive next. So let's say you drive a uh, Honda Civic into a dealership and you're getting it serviced there. That dealership um, might find it that, okay, only for a hundred dollars more, you can get into another Civic, a, a newer Civic, an HRV or a CRV. And we determined that those are the most likely cars for you to go into next to maybe like a 70% degree certainty. And we uh, managed to sell that software into over 150 dealerships across Canada. Um, so it was quite successful. It was actually before the AI craze. So yeah. now I think it might even, it, the, the, I'm sure the, the thing's doing really well. Um, even better. So uh, after that um, that successful product launch, I was again recruited to IOTEX, where I spent the last year and a half or so um, building a product called WebStream, uh, and you know building out several other products, as including IOPay that we discussed earlier. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, back to the AI thing, man. Most people think AI just came out, and they, they're mistaken because they don't realize AI has been around for a while. It's just becoming more readily available to the everyday user, right? 100%. I think it was ChatGPT just kind of made it mainstream. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's been around for so long. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love to point that out because people are like, yeah, AI just came out. Like, no, man, AI has been around <laughs> for a while. It's just you're 100%. finally starting to hear about it. It's finally getting into the public scene. So Yeah, and VCs um, are throwing crazy money at it. Money at it right, right. So. right. <laughs> Throw, I was joking about that on a call the other day. Like, just... Throw AI behind a name and, and they'll get some VC funding. So legitimately, how, yes. <laughs> yeah. So you know, and, and it changes every year, right? It's it's a different buzzword, but all those technologies yeah. have sticking power in the long term. Um, yeah. But I, I'm curious to find out more about IOTEX and, and and sharing with everybody uh, what IOTEX does. So if you want to maybe give us a little insight into what is IOTEX, you mentioned WebStream, and even there's some 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 improvements coming with IOPay too, right? Yeah, 100%. So I'll give you a little rundown of a history lesson here. So our white paper went live in around uh, 2018. Mainnet of our layer one blockchain went live in 2019. So the thesis for our blockchain 
was that the number one user of um, blockchain in the future is going to be devices rather than people. And I think intuitively this makes a lot of sense. Like, um, I don't know how many smart devices you have, but like a lot of people have a smartwatch. They'll have like their smartphone and that's already two right there. Um, yeah. And like and there's, there's plenty of other devices, including your car. Right? It's like a, they call it a computer on wheels. Um, yeah, even, like, even my refrigerator. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Exactly. So um, you can see how it would easily add up to be, being that billions and billions of devices that could be on chain one day. Um, and that's why we decided to go that direction back in 2019. Um, and then we decided to launch a couple of POC devices along the way um, and, and, you know, have that data going on stream uh, on, on chain. Uh, so one one device was a it was called the UCAM and the UCAM was a uh, blockchain enabled security camera uh, for a home. So just like uh, uh, we sold around 20,000 of those, um, I think it was the year 2020. And so that was, re- that was really successful and you can actually still buy it on Amazon now. Um, and then a year later, we launched something called the Pebble Tracker, which is essentially a GPS tracker, which also can detect uh, temperature, humidity, light, um, and uh, air quality so you can have like various applications for this so this was like the perfect poc device that we're able to uh like give to developers in order to build like really interesting applications so there's a few uh, projects out there using it still now today um but actually after launching that uh that so i think that was 2021 um we managed to sell thousands of those within 24 hours and that was with the promise of incentives in the future. So we basically said, okay, eventually there's going to be developers who develop projects um, using this device. So we buy it now, get in early, um, and you can get incentivized later for this. Um, and that kind of showed the power of what I what it's called today, DPIN or decentralized physical infrastructure networks. And that's like a really really fast growing trend in crypto. And I encourage everyone to look that up. Um, but the first, so we, we were, we've been talking about this since like 2020, 2021. Um, and like I said, it's really starting to catch fire now, but the biggest player that people would know about is helium and their helium hotspots. Um, this, this kind of, uh, this is a pretty big project out there. Um, and, and they managed to make, like make, it's, it's quite a controversial thing as well. Cause they, they went through some struggles along the way. Um, but overall they've, they've just recently migrated to the Solana blockchain and they're, it seems to be really picking up and catching fire again. So yeah, I encourage everyone to check that one out as well. Awesome. I, I, yeah, I did some helium mining for, for quite a while. Um, in fact, I had the miner set up until, uh, until I had some damage on my house from a hurricane and the, the miner itself was messed up back in 21. So oh, no. yeah, mine That's for a so few cool. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, it must have been a good experience, and and that was like the yeah. first first few projects that um, that really kind of kicked this sector forward. Um, and then you you know fast forward to today, and there's there's like um, over like there's hundreds of projects popping up now, and they're they're getting like really really interested fund interesting funding from VCs uh, just because this is a sector that can generate real revenue, hardware revenue. Um, and they find that really attractive and also, uh, people find that attractive as well. Like, uh, why not monetize my data? If I'm, if I'm going to have like a Google or an Amazon taking my data, why don't I keep that data? That, that data is important to me oh, and I can choose to give it to someone else that, um, that, uh, I'm able to actually monetize it. So we, we kind of saw this back in 2021 and ever since I joined the company, that's been the biggest push for me. We launched a product called Webstream. um, around six months ago and two months ago we launched our devnet um, version of the software and what this does is it's a decentralized um, infrastructure essentially like a middleware layer between smart devices and uh, any blockchain so we're chain agnostic wallet agnostic um, device agnostic and uh, language uh, coding language agnostic so we're able to really work with a, a number of web 2 and web 3 developers in order to again act as that middleman between uh, the product projects devices and uh, putting that on chain and like t- and uh, providing the quick and easy ability to provide incentives to people for using those devices. So in the case of uh, Helium, we would act as the middle layer, um, and that that helps Helium incentivize the the um, token uh, issuance. Gotcha. 
Man, yeah. something you said earlier really uh, resonated with me. I guess it's a little bit of my background, but you made a comment that there's going to be more devices online than people. Yeah. And, man, that is so true. Uh, most people don't know that about me, but prior to getting into this space, I used to run Best Buy stores. And <laughs> one of the biggest questions I would have my staff always ask people is how many devices do you have connected to the Internet? When people were coming to buy routers, right, because they come and buy a router, they buy it cheap when it's not enough because... I mean, every TV in the house. Uh, I, I wasn't joking earlier when I said refrigerator. I got one of those Samsung <laughs> smart hubs. So even yeah. my refrigerator, right? I mean, there's so many different devices people don't think of. And now there's lighting and there's all these other things. And, you know, if, if my refrigerator could be on chain, it could take care of ordering a new filter for me whenever I needed it. Or it could be helping secure a network while it's working and it could earn enough money to pay for the filter. That would be cool <laughs> too, right? <laughs> yeah, 100%. No, no, it's... it's I. I think they, there's been some predictions that uh, that mar the number of devices out there is just going to grow by billions and billions over the next um, the next few years by 2030, and that's that's not even just on blockchain. Just in general, I'm saying like mm -hmm. the number of smart devices out there is going to continue to grow. It's it's right. uh, it's I think they call it the connected home. So like yeah. literally ev everything just connected and plugged in <laughs> is, is where I, I can see things going. 100%. Yeah, and then you move that to where you can have. You can move some of the devices on chain to where there there can be some transparency, some automation, uh, and like I mean, I was you know I was <laughs> I was kind of joking earlier about the refrigerator, but that could be a possibility to where you have a device that's maybe helping secure a network and it's earning little fractions of of a certain cryptocurrency that could then pay for its ma its own maintenance. Um, yeah, yeah, and you can see like let's say uh, you can see the traceability there, and let's say the temperature drops or it's turned off for a certain certain time you can go back and check like check in the chain and say oh it was actually at that time and, um yeah, yeah i could see it being a thing 100 <laughs> percent. awesome awesome so tell us a little bit more about iopay uh as well because you mentioned some changes with that so um yeah what is iopay for those that are listening yeah so iopay is our multi-chain crypto wallet um we initially launched it just for the iotex network uh a few years ago and about around like again a year and a half two years ago we made it multi-chain so really opening it up to um all all the evm best based chains out there and uh we have around three hundred thousand users right now and like like i mentioned before we are integrated with fio protocol and excited to to use your guys's uh name service on there so um uh yeah so what we've done and the changes that we're making there are kind of tied in with what I discussed earlier around uh, decentralized physical infrastructure networks. And we're really uh, bullish on this sector. So we're, we're trying to tie in all of our products with uh, this sector because we see that as being the future. Yeah. And what that means for us is providing um, uh, uh, like token support for all the different deep decentralized infrastructure network products out, uh, projects out there so that'll include um, your demos, uh, your GeoNets, your Reacts, your Enviro blocks. So making these uh, tokens supported in a few different ways, including um, just from an asset standpoint, but also providing a, a place where users can go and see a dashboard of like several statistics that they might find important to them when making an investment. So that would be like the token price, but it would also be looking at the uh, the revenue that they generate from the device per day on average, uh, the, the cost of a device for that particular project, and then the days it would take to break even uh, if you decide to purchase that miner. So you're able to quickly look and say, okay, these are all the different devices out there, which one is gonna make the most sense for me? Um, maybe it's a project that you think you think will grow in the future and you wanna get in early, or it's a project that's established like Helium and you, you're fine getting in uh, at a later date. Um, we want to provide those uh, that transparency to all the different uh, investors out there, so they're able to, um, and and just in general that we're able to push the sector forward because, like I said, we're bullish on it and we want to continue to push it forward as we're we're kind of stapling uh, a lot of our our hope onto onto this uh, future of this because we really believe in it. Absolutely, look, I, I love bringing on projects like yourself with IOTEX because. There's so many things out there that there are projects that have just been designed to launch a wallet or just be designed to launch a DEX. And there's really, outside of that, there's no utility. But what you guys are doing, um, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a big sector as, too, as well. Uh, back, I was mentioning when I, when I do those, when I used to do those exercises with my staff back in the day is how many connected devices. And I started adding up my house alone and between computers and TVs and everything else. I mean, it's 30 plus now. 
in there and to see some of those devices on chain and uh, kind of leading into, there was a thought provoking comment you made to me. I think it was in Denver when we met in Denver about FIO handles, right? Cause I'm thinking of FIO handles, every user needs a FIO handle because it makes sending and receiving crypto easier because you don't make mistakes. You don't send on the wrong chain to the wrong address. Hell, I had a buddy today reach out to me because um, he sent 20 grand on the wrong chain. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think there's a way to resolve that, luckily for him, because of the chain it went to. But that's a real problem. But you mentioned about devices, every device having a handle, right? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Could, so you can see, like, you could name one, one of your devices Smart Fridge, right? Yeah. And then the other, the other one can be a Smart Watch. And, and, you know, you don't get get confused when you're sending these tokens around or, or, or right. you know, posting that, uh, you know, giving it to a friend is pretty, pretty standard and, and straightforward. And I, I can hundred percent seeing that being a thing for sure. Yeah. That device has a wallet and I need to send something to it to top it up or maintenance or whatever. I can send it easily without making a mistake. So either the device, I don't have to worry about the device making a mistake. It's me when I'm sending to it, or it has a wallet in there. Am I sending from it? Right. Being able exactly. to make sure that I could do that. So it really. Man, I left that conversation with like, oh my God, I never thought about that, <laughs> right? It's yeah, not yeah. like every human needs a needs a FIO handle, every device as well. Uh, and it's something I never thought of, but I think a lot of people don't, aren't really cognizant of this, this whole, the IoT space and, and what the potential is in it. And that's really where I think blockchain is gonna see so much, uh, so much adoption and use case because a lot of these devices are gonna operate better on a on a blockchain network than on a centralized um whether it's controlled or metered network yeah i agree no 100 percent. and and just to to throw like a little interesting kind of tidbit or, or curveball like like uh, a lot of people that i talk to they're like oh like i've been hearing about iot and blockchain since like for years and years 8 2018 whatever um and and that's true like i was literally teaching during my lectures of teaching blockchain business i was actually teaching like about iot and blockchain and some of the potential there um, and then they're like, okay, why is it not ca like catching fire? Like what's going on here? Um, I, I think, I think, um, the, the helium really paved the way with what they did with the decentralized uh, physical infrastructure networks. And now it's kind of created a path where, uh, there's a lot of momentum behind it. I think that's what it takes is just creating a lot of momentum behind something. Um, and that's kind of like, uh, those networks are more from a consumer standpoint, but I, I think zero knowledge proofs are going to play a huge role in bringing on the enterprise uh, market. So I, I can 100% foresee that being the, the the layer which is going to really bring in the next the next phase of adoption, especially with enterprise. Um, it, it'll it'll allow for a huge amounts of scalability and, and privacy. And I, I think that's the key, that, especially in that space, because a lot of those enterprise companies, they talk about, okay, I want to use a private blockchain, but that kind of defeats the purpose of, of blockchain and, and crypto. So I think that 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 adding that zero knowledge layer proof, uh, which is what we're trying to do with Webstream. And we have tons of research going into it and the entire Ethereum community really has a ton of research going into it. Um, I, I, I can 100% see that being like the, the one lynch pin between uh, right now and getting to that, that mass adoption, especially for enterprise. Absolutely. So um, yeah, I mean, you mentioned IoT and blockchain. I can remember it was 2017, I think it was 2016 or 2017. Um, looking into a project at the time called IOTA. I don't know if you're familiar, I'm sure you're familiar yep. with it. Um, and you guys um, have your own layer one chain at IOTech. So tell us a little bit about that that chain. How does that chain it operate? Like what's the, the IOTech uh, chain? mechanism behind it? Yeah. Yeah, so we're EVM based chain. Um, and, uh, you know, it's really fast, really uh, like reliable. Um, and it needs to be, and it's cheap. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be to, in order to take these device messages. Right. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's been pretty successful. We've had, well, it's been very successful. We had over, over 300 million assets on chain, uh, 30,000 devices currently. Um, and it's got us to like in, into the top 100 projects. Um, and, and, uh, one thing though, is that the layer one market has become saturated, just like the crypto wallet market has become saturated. So the same way that in crypt with our crypto wallet, we need to innovate and do things differently and, and kind of focus on a niche, which we, we've done with the, uh, with the decentralized physical infrastructure networks angle to our, our IOP wallet. And the same way with our layer one, we need to think about how we're going to uh, go into this like next year um, and how we're going to compete. Um, and the way that we're going to compete is with our uh, middleware layer that I mentioned there uh, earlier called Webstream. 
Yeah. So in, instead, just opening things up, making things uh, chain agnostic. And then the way that the IOTEX layer is involved in that. So the actual utility of the coin, first of all, I'll say is um, when you register devices, you'll be registered using IOTEX. And then um, IOTEX will be used to, to make the uh, device messages run um, and, uh, and the transactions run. But the, the way that IOTEX will be used for WebStream is that IOTEX will be used in order to make the WebStream uh, middleware layer work as well. So that, that token will be used in both locations, and that's going to be the way that um, we propel our project forward um, and, and have the both layer one, which is not going anywhere. Um, and we, we continue to help, uh, want to help push that forward too. But uh, really the big push is WebStream and getting more uh, like these de decentralized physical infrastructure network projects on board and, and just pushing the whole sector forward so that we benefit both on the layer one side that projects that, uh, especially like grassroots projects that want to join in and go with like a, a blockchain that, that we can provide them some consulting and, um, and, uh, and, and knowledge around the space, but also like on the decentralized uh, infra play, infra area where we can help them out as well, um, whether it's in a chain agnostic or IOTEX uh, network way. Awesome, awesome. So let's jump in. I mentioned, we alluded to it earlier, kind of we met at events that you guys handle uh, hold. Uh, mm -hmm. and you know, every time I've been in a different city and we just talked, we're going to be in Singapore soon and mm -hmm. you guys are going to be out there doing an event. So you guys typically have your own event, satellite events during some of the major events, which is really cool. I really like it. So can you tell everybody about those events and, uh, who participates in those? Yeah. So our first one was back in Denver. Uh, I think that was like four or five months ago now and yeah, in March. Yeah. So, so the first one was in Denver and. What we did was we set up like uh, 12 demo booths and invited all of our uh, like key ecosystem projects that are like the ones that are building really interesting things, um, especially like with bringing in their devices and showing them off. And, and we had like uh, like several really cool projects there. So I'll, I'll shout out a couple. One is called Caldance, which is like the um, the crypto version of Peloton. So like the Pel like the Peloton bike you ride. So that was really yeah. cool to bring in and just show off and say, okay, this is like a really interesting thing. Um, there's also um, Demo uh, brought in an actual car. So they had that parked out in front yeah. and you have to see how it's like a connected vehicle. Um, and there's, uh, there's like a, weather, a weather station someone brought in. So various like really interesting projects that, that were there in person. And uh, we so we labeled this event, it's called the, the real world events. Our, uh, R three AL World Events uh, World dot com, and we've hosted I think five events so far across the world. Um, so there was the Denver one, and then after that I went to Asia for Tokyo. Uh, that was e Tokyo. We hosted an event there, and then in Hong Kong uh, Web three Festival we hosted an event there. So I went to those ones as well, and then came back for Texas. Uh, we did our uh, consensus. We did another event there. Um, that one was more of like a with with less of a demo thing, but it was more of just uh, bringing in some really interesting panelists, uh, both VCs and, and projects to speak about uh, the sector and how it's growing. And then uh, we did another one in Paris just recently, and that one was really successful. And that was more of the, a little bit more of the demo style. And now in Singapore, again, this is going to be, uh, we're going to have several demo booths again set up because we found that the most interactive and most unique um, like space really in crypto where you can actually ha handle and touch these tangible products. Um, and, and it just makes crypto real, I think, for a lot of um, right. people that at least come to our events, whereas a lot of the other uh, events, it's very esoteric, Th thinking about things like um, uh, like cr like just crypto in general can be quite out there, whereas this is like real, you can see it, you can touch it, you can feel it. Absolutely. I haven't been to the one in Denver, and then I was at the one in Consensus. Both mm -hmm. good events, but yeah, the one in Denver, I mean, the demo stuff, being able to mm -hmm. walk up to the booth, talk to the projects and have them show you something that's working. This is not just something that, oh, we want to build this in the future. No, this is what we're doing mm -hmm. right now with it. That was really cool. Uh, mm -hmm. I did see those projects you mentioned there. So uh, yeah. that, that was pretty interesting. Now, I do have to say the consensus one was pretty good as well, even though you didn't do the demo. That was right around the time of the Helium migration, right? Yes, that's right. That's right. That was, And we had... Um, 
the CEO of Helium there and, and several other people from Helium. So they were um, excited to like talk about the, the change because I think there was like quite a bit of scrutiny around, oh, why are they doing this? And they were able to like dissuade some of those things and, and provide some reasoning behind it. And it seemed to work so far, like um, every, from everything we're seeing, they're, they're quite, been quite successful since and people are happy with it. They're happy with it. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest from an, from an outsider, uh, I had that same scrutiny of Helium, having yeah. mined them in the past and knowing about the project and then like, why are you moving to Solana? And to hear him talk at consensus, it was it was really good. It was really, um, you know, I think so many times we don't look at things from one perspective, we don't see the bigger picture. Whereas if that's their business, their, their bread and butter, they've they've looked at all angles, the, the pros and the cons yeah. of what they're doing. And it just made sense. And man, I can tell you, you probably know this as well because we have a layer one chain as well. And maintaining your own own layer one chain and being able to build ecosystem infrastructure it's yeah. it's complex sometimes you wish you could offload that layer one uh <laughs> responsibility which i mean granted we have now you know block producers but there's still updates and things that we have to propose yeah. to the community as well yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah we do this we do iotex improvement protocols and we yeah. do our like it's it's generated some really interesting discussions and and um really um interesting improvements over time. Um, but yeah, it, it is, a, it is quite a lot to maintain. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Aaron. So you mentioned the next event you guys are going to be at for that real world is going to be token 2049 in Singapore, right? Yeah, exactly. And again, that'll be more the demo style. So that definitely, definitely recommend, um, we'll definitely have you over there and, uh, we can talk about more about VO and, and continue this conversation. Awesome, man. So anybody that's listening, can you tell them uh, again, like where they can find out more about that event? Yeah, so it's uh, if you go through IOTEX.io IO website, uh, we okay. have a link there to uh, realworld.com, which is r3alworld.com. Awesome, awesome. So definitely make sure to check that out if you're going to be in the area and also follow them to find out uh, where the future events are going to be because they may be somewhere near you. I challenge everybody to get out to these events if you can. Uh, that's where you meet people that are building in the space, right? That's what solidified it for me back in i got into the space in 2016 and 2018 i started hitting the event circuit trying to figure out if this was real and those events really solidified it for me because i built people that were building stuff in the space it wasn't this abstract digital currency that oh may catch on one day i was able to see a lot about that so you, you already dropped your website um what social channels and where else can people follow you yeah so twitter is a big one for us uh, so we'll, we'll definitely keep you guys up to date on the Twitter side, both on events that are happening, also on improvements for IOPay and, and our other products as well. Awesome. Awesome. Is there any, uh, so all your other socials are linked on your website too. If someone goes to the website. They yeah. hundred percent. If you go to IOTEX.io, you can, you can check out our telegram as well, our discord. And that's all there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So everybody listening, you definitely want to find out more about this project, not just about their layer one chain or their their own crypto, but to learn more about what they're building in a space, because that's what's gonna, that's what's gonna create long term value. A lot of the value in crypto in the past has just been on speculation. And mm -hmm. so finding out the projects that are truly building in the space, truly innovating, that's what you want to find out. And these guys are the real deal. I mean, they're at every event. So I mm -hmm. recommend checking them out. So Aaron, as we wrap up, man, any, any final words for everybody or any, any uh, suggestions? Yeah, de decentralized physical infrastructure networks is 100%. Um, we, we foresee is going to be the future. So um, I think investors and projects out there, I would really encourage you guys to uh, you go through our website and, and learn a bit more about uh, this sector because I, I, I'm really bullish on it. And uh, I think Wayne can see the future of it as well. Absolutely, man. I'm, uh, I've got a middle note as soon as we're done recording. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going to check out the site and go, go check that out because that's it's a term that I haven't heard before, but definitely want to learn more about. I mean, the, the name kind of gives a little insight of what it's about, but I, I agree that's definitely something that's going to be big. So I'll check it out. Maybe we'll talk more about it in September. 100%. Awesome. Cool. Aaron, well, thanks again for joining us today. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And we will catch you on the next episode. Take care, everybody. Thank you.